Good evening. It is April 27, 2023, and it is 6.30 p.m. We are going to start with the Citizens Forum. We have two speakers who have signed up to speak, and um, whenever I call your name, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, and then you will have three minutes to speak. First, we have Mr. Doug Schaefer. Thank you, Mayor and Alderman. Dames is Doug Schaefer. I've lived at 192 Morningside Drive for 45 years, the last 30 in the city of Laverne. And I come tonight because I've seen an awful lot of signs with QR codes and they're calling for uh, the, a new zoning ordinance, which I have no, nothing against that. I also, I brought my wife tonight, so if I say anything that gets off track, I'll hear about it okay <laughs> but <laughs> good for that. i want i want to bring up that i have looked all over the internet i've looked at the laverne's website i've tried to call down to the plant planning commission didn't get answers but i saw two numbers there that you could call that were talking about frequently asked questions dial those numbers twice as a matter of fact and the first time this one rang, and then all after about five rings, it stopped and said, six, 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 whatever. It wasn't the number I dialed is, can't take your call. So I called the other number, about five rings, and it came and said, leave your message, and that's all. I haven't been able to find out a thing about what this new ordinance is, and if it's something to me that is worth six meetings or whatever it is at the end of May, I, if I go to a meeting, I would like to know what I'm going. When I took a, take a math test or took a math test in my younger day. I like to know what was going to be on it and have a chance then. So when I don't see anything, I think we're getting like Washington, D.C., and transparency's fall, falling away. And to me, that's not right, that every government is answerable to its people. And I think long before the 26th, 22nd of May comes around that we ought to have something available that we can go on the internet, preferably on the website. There's a lot of other things on there telling us what's happening in November. I can't remember them all, but I'm getting older. But I think that's the only fair thing you can do for the 40,000 citizens that live here in Laverne. And I'll close with these couple of words. Growth is not necessarily progress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And then next, we have Joyce Gamble. Hi. I'm Joyce Gamble. I live at 246 Hollandale Road here in LaVarne. And thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, I have resided at my house since 1993 for 30 years and um, ha have lived in the same place. My husband uh, passed away in 2011 and I take a lot of pride in maintaining my property. And my, the purpose of me speaking is to address the first reading that you're going to be considering to rezone 252 Hollandale Road, which is exactly um, directly adjacent to my property. property. I'm on the south side of that. Now, my property for over a mile going down Hollandale Road on that side of Hollandale Road, which is the east side of Hollandale Road, is all, every parcel is five to ten acres, and we're all, the whole community is on R1. And these, uh, the owner of 252 are requesting rezoning to R2, medium density. Um, and <clears throat> I guess my biggest point or concern would be if R2 zoning is approved, even though the Planning Commission is, um, has stated an unfavorable recommendation according to the agenda for that rezoning request, uh, my uh, fear or concern is that that could set a, a, what I would call a dangerous precedent for all the other homeowners down that whole stretch of road that, you know, may subsequently follow well, you know, and then you can just have, you know, little mini subdivisions every other, every other parcel potentially that could exist. So uh, I'm concerned about 
concerned about that. Now, uh, the house next to me, 252 Hollandale Road, is on a uh, septic system, as, as we all are on that stretch of Hollandale Road. And um, <clears throat> I understand from the uh, engineer that's working on that project that he told me, they're planning on, um, if they get this approved, they're going to, uh, obviously we'll have to uh, tap onto the sewer, uh, the public sewer system. And by doing that, lots of excavation going under Hollandale Road to tap on into the sewer system at Hollandale Estates. Um, and, and also in, in the plans that they have presented, they're going to draw, uh, construct a road from Hollandale Road, the entire depth of their property, which is a road right next to my property line. Lots of excavation, and, and I've, I'm very familiar. I have six acres, and I'm very familiar with the whole layout of that land, and it's rock. Well, Lawrence rock. Brotherford County's rock. Um, so I, I don't know how much uh, construction can go that would not require some sort of blasting and excavation. I would assume that that's going to be a, a big possibility. And, um, and that's, um, could, you know, could damage neighboring homes, including mine. And at the very least, the magnitude of a construction project, that huge, huge, will just negatively impact the enjoyment of my own home, uh, and I suspect other neighbors as well. So, so can I just ask one question? So, I just in closing, um, I would just like to know what would be not looking for an answer. What would be the benefit to the city of Laverne to rezone this one property in the middle of a huge R1 zone community? Because, in my opinion, the main purpose of zoning is to protect the character of the district. So, I respectfully request that you reject that rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you. And we will go right into our workshop. Uh, the prayer <laughs> Tuesday night will be by uh, Pastor Troy Powell. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance will be with Vice Mayor No. Uh, everyone should have a copy of the minutes from the April 4th regular meeting. Um, we will have a presentation to Detective Michael Colazzo. And then we'll have departmental reports. Then moving on to old business, we've got second reading ordinance 2023-06, an ordinance to amend Article 4, Section 5.055 of the Laverne Zoning Ordinance regarding the floodway and flood fringe districts. This received a favorable, favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on March 28, 2023. Um, as we discussed last month, this is uh, part of the uh, floodplain management and so keeps us... Uh, to meet or exceed the NFIP requirements. Does anyone have any questions? Bruce. Mayor, if I may, uh, we had planned to have a public hearing uh, prior to the meeting on Tuesday for this item. We have to have a public hearing in order for it to be approved. Unfortunately, the newspaper had a mistake and they did not print a whole page of legal ads, not just ours, so it affected several. Uh, so we will need to defer this uh, Tuesday night, and we do have a special meeting uh, planned for a public hearing and special meeting planned for uh, May the 8th uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. here in this room. Uh, so staff at this point recommends that this gets deferred Tuesday night. Okay. Everyone understand? And then moving on. Second reading ordinance 2023-07, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund budget. This uh, includes uh, $412,210, um, deals with our retirement fund as far as the, the matching portion. Um, and then there's a few other items in here, additional funding for Volkert with the zoning ordinance update, um, some multi-purpose additions, some IT stuff. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to six, second reading ordinance 2023-08, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 senior citizens fund budget. Again, this was discussed last month. Uh, this is for $10,500 and it's for the parking lot paving. Does anyone have any questions? 
Second reading ordinance 2023-09, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 stormwater fund budget. Um, this is a $2,300 um, budget amendment, and it is, the again, with the retirement matching. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to the consent agenda. A, approve or reject city bids and purchases. Number one is to award uh, award contract to Kimley Horn for consulting services related to the CMAC project described as SR-1 Murfreesboro Pike from Waldron Road to the Laverne City Limits, Waldron Road from 24 to uh, Murfreesboro Pike and Old Nashville Highway from Stones River Road to the city limits. TDOT pin number is 130747.00. This is the long talked about CMAC grant that is sidewalks for these roads. Does anyone have any questions about this? This is awarding a contract with Kimberly Horn for as far as uh, we completed the consulting services. So, does anyone have any questions? Moving on to B, approve amendment number two to the agreement with Kimley Horn for the Blair Road West Extension Project right of way uh, staking. And this is just uh, an amendment to our agreement with them. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to C, approve agreement with Archive Social for social media record retention. Um, this is the city is going to be charged uh, fifty three ninety one for the first year, and then uh, seventy one eighty eight for the subsequent two years of service. This is to uh, retain all social media records. Does anyone have any questions? D approved contract with Unilines for an employee assistance program. Um, basically, this is. Um, an EAP program, Employee Assistance Program, um, to provide counseling services, legal advice, financial services um, to the city HR department and, and critical incident uh, stress debriefings. Uh, this is a very large enhancement to our existing EAP uh, provided through Standard Company. So this is going to be, um, the city is going to pay $2.38 per employee per month or annually, it's going to be $7,025.75 for all of these services. Other cities have this? They have uh, EAP programs, yes. And private business as well. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to E, approved services agreement with Kim Radford to paint a mural on City Hall. Something I have talked about for a long time, and I'm... Very, very happy to see it on here. But um, total cost for the mural are sixty-seven eighty, um, with up to basically uh, thirty-three ninety reimbursable from the ABC grant that we were awarded. Um, so um, this would put a mural on the sidewall of City Hall. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I like Bruce. I like this item be pulled off of a Senate agenda on a special item. Okay. Has the uh, has the mural been decided? Has it been decided, uh, David? Come on up here. <coughs> I know I've spoken about one that would celebrate kind of our diversity here, as we are the most diverse area of Rutherford County. But um, I know the Arts Committee has talked a little bit about it. But David, tell yes, us what sir, you know. They have. It has not been decided yet. Um, she was not going to start any work until she received a signed contract. So we wanted to bring it back before you guys. <coughs> this board approved um, accepting the grant, I think, September of last year. Um, we wanted to bring it back to you guys with the grant language to try to clean things up. Um, it's 50 50 grant, 3390 on their part, 3390 on ours. If we go above that, we're on the hook for the rest of it. If we go below that, just say if we spend if the total price is 4000 then they put two to it, and we put two. Um, right now, I think it's going to come in at the budgeted amount, what we've requested. Um, that's based on $25 square foot, 270 square foot. So it's going to be roughly 
10 by 27. Um, it, the, the figure has not, the, gra the uh, design has not been decided on yet. I can pass you guys out a pamphlet of kind of what we're looking at and what the beautification committee was looking at. Completely, I was going to say completely misspelled Laverne, yeah. but it's <laughs> just concepts. <coughs> Very yeah. nice. It's not going to be spelled like that on our building. Um, those were just some designs that she had that she came up with. So if you see in those designs, um, what we're looking at is Laverne spelled on the side of the building. Um, and different elements throughout the city put into those different letters. Um, she has some ideas about putting the Veterans Wall in there, Veterans Memorial Park, um, emergency services, the library, um, City Hall. So I don't know if when that design is done, if that has to come back before this board for final approval. If it does, that may put us behind a little bit. She is available in May to paint. If we have to go into June, if we have to put this on next month, I think that'll be pushing. I don't think we'll meet that grant deadline. So you guys did approve the grant as far as the design. If they want to see the, the, the design. Can we get that to them individually, or is that something that has to be approved through the board? I don't know that the board has to approve the design per se unless they want to. And once we get, you know, I think her price includes four revisions. Anything over that, she may charge $80, $90 an hour. Um, of course, we're going to want our board members, committee members to, to weigh in on that also. But once we kind of get that narrowed down, we can get you guys individually a design. So, you know, we can kind of speed the process up. Anyone have any questions or concerns about this? So what, the beautification board? We'll put together what they think about this, and then we'll make the final decision, or do we need to give input? Um, I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely get it to you guys. We're, we're kind of going to narrow it down to one design that the majority can agree on, um, and then we'll get that to you guys individually. So, you know, if you have any change ideas we can move forward with that also well, that's what we got the board for i would hate to think that we would go different than the board and let them decide and make the decision on what they want yeah and i'm and if you could go to her website i don't know if any of those designs are hers but if you could go to her website and look her up um, her work is very impressive so i think we're definitely in good hands with that um for that price and that's kind of the vision of what the beautification committee wanted to move forward with I don't think we're really going to go wrong with that. And her contact information is in the packet for everybody, both email and phone number. Once she started, I think her time frame was 7 to 14 days from start to finish. So if, if we could get approval and get a design in by second week in May, I think we can, you know, she can knock it out by 1st of June. So we'd fall in that window for the grant. And um, you are making sure that Laverne's going to have the space? Yes, she has been aware of that. Um, she knows that. We have copied her own emails with that. Just, just checking. Yes, sir. So, okay, does anyone else have any questions, concerns, or comments about this? And what you see is kind of the one that's kind of like the banner. So ours is not going to be like a straight <clears throat> in a line. It's kind of going to be within that 27-foot more of a, a banner or a wave. Thank you. Thank you, David. Then we have um, approve a venue rental agreement at the view at, Fount at uh, Fountains for the annual employee holiday party on Friday, December 15th, 2023. Andrew, do you want to come talk about this? <coughs> Good evening, board. Uh, last year we had um, a fantastic evening out with all of our staff and their significant others. Um, and, um, you know, it had been a long time since the city had done an evening event for Christmas for staff. So I think some kind of didn't attend because they weren't sure it was going to be like. 
Um, we did max out the space that we used last year, and we've already heard from people who didn't attend that said they definitely wanted to come this next year. So we found a venue that will be able to uh, meet the needs of what our expected attendance would be. Um, in your packet, you'll see that we did receive three different quotes. We looked at three different venues, all with um, uh, space that would hold for everybody, but venues have different catering requirements. So for instance, you know, if you go to a hotel, you have to use their services, which tend to be higher priced. So we've narrowed uh, it down to the view at Fountains. It is a beautiful location, um, and their rental fee includes um, most all of the services that we would need, tables, chairs, sound, stage, um, all of that. So we're anticipating and planning for a really special evening this year. Does anyone have any questions about this? Yeah, Bruce, I'd like for this item here to be removed and put on a uh, item by itself. The only question that I have, uh, I think there needs to be an amendment. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Board for members for can't tickets? get tickets. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. I will leave that up to the city administrator. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My office, 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Denied. Well, I wish I'd have known it beforehand. I wouldn't have had to stand in line. <laughs> Any other questions, concerns, or comments about this? Seeing none, we're going to move on. Approved contract to audit accounts with Blankenship CPA Group, PLLC, for the period beginning July 1st, 2022, and ending June 30th, 2023. This is our annual audit contract. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to H, approve amendment 23-2 to contract 2326-17 with the Greater Nashville Regional Council, better known as GNRC, for the Laverne Senior Center um, this is where they are removing uh, references to Welski agent, uh, Aging and Disability Database, um, and they're just replacing it with State Unit on Aging Approved Database. Very small change of wording, that's it. There's no financial impact to this. Does anyone have any questions? And then I, approved grant contract with the State of Tennessee, Department of Military, Tennessee Emergency Management, agency for the community safe room and uh, the contract amount is going to be thirty three thousand three hundred four dollars and eighty three cents and um, this is um, basically just as it says the next phase of the community safe room project um, and so does anyone have any questions on this Seeing none, we're going to move over to new business. First reading, Ordinance 2023-10, an ordinance to amend the City of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 14, parcel 23.2, consisting of approximately five acres, located at five, I'm sorry, at 252 Hollandale Road from an, I, uh, from an R1 low-density residential zoning district to a R2 medium-density residential zoning uh, district. This received an unfavorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on March 28th, 2023. Bruce, you look like you've got something with this. Yes, sir. This is another item we had scheduled a public hearing for on Tuesday evening, the same advertisement that did not run. Uh, so we will reschedule the public hearing for the June uh, meeting on June the 6th. Uh, so staff would recommend that this be deferred so that the public hearing can be held prior to the first reading. And, and go forward like we normally would with the rezoning request. Okay. Does everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. I will say, just to, since we, we're meeting here and we're able to discuss this, um, I'm not in favor of this. I know um, Planning Commission ha had went several months uh, round and about with the uh, engineer and property owner. It came originally as an R3, and um, that did not get very far they reduced it down to an r2 i know i'd spoken with the engineer myself and um, he said that that even if r2 is not um, approved they still plan on developing it under r1 so they have plans to be able to develop this under current zoning so for me i don't see the need to increase the density for this one parcel when 
Everything else is already R1 around it, uh, except for across the street where you've got um, Lyndhurst subdivision, but that's a built out subdivision, um, which backs up to this. Does anyone else have any questions, concerns, or comments? So it's five acres, they can still build five homes, pretty much. No, they build more than five homes. Well, if it's R1. At R1, they can probably build about three or three and a half homes per acre. The design that I'd seen at one point was, I want to say, 10 at the most for this property. Um, but again, they've got other things to work through. That wasn't an official submittal. Any other comments? Okay, let's move on to first reading ordinance 2023-11, an ordinance of the city of Laverne, uh, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Uh, you should all have your a copy of the budget. We've had multiple public meetings on this. Um, the pr proposed tax rate will remain the same as it was last year, um, and that is 0.5363 per $100 of assessed value of real and personal property. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, I have some, but I got to find my paper. <laughs> Can you get us some more papers? Emails, longer emails? Where's the nonprofit at? I just had it in my hand. Here it is. <coughs> I mean, I just had it. There you go. Nonprofits. Okay, let me see what my questions were. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right. So my first thing is about the uh, the schools. Okay. So the band asked for twelve. We're giving them six. Is that correct? Yes, right. Just right around half. And the wrestlers asking for five, and softballs asking for seven. Uh, I know it's a long way from seventy, but uh, and I talked with a little bit about this with uh, Bruce. Is I'd like to if the city is going to start or do something like this, I'd like to see us give a little bit to each one of those and if we're going to do six for the band i'd like to see us do maybe uh 25 25 and then 1000 for for uh for wrestling you know give each i'd rather see them get a little bit than nothing that's just my opinion and then the other thing, and I asked Bruce to, to bring Mr. Broker in, is I think we need to not only talk about the IDB board, but we need to uh, explain to the citizens exactly what this could curtail. Because I know I was confused, and I want to make sure that I understand it, and I want to make sure the citizens understand it. Tom, I hate to... I hate to bring you out on a Titans draft night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be quick. <laughs> but uh, I don't think a lot, I know I didn't. I think a lot of citizens, I can say that I did a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but I did some research about uh, these boards and in the surrounding counties and the surrounding cities. I don't know why in the world the past board member boards didn't get one of these boards started and waited until recently because everything I can tell about them they're 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 good for business they're good for retail uh, but because I think the primary and correct me if I'm wrong the primary thing about these boards is they actually can say yes or no 
to a particular business if it doesn't fit our needs to whereas a property owner just sells it to anybody uh, that comes along is that a is that somewhat on the fire well yes and no and, and again you've you, you like to do this maybe give me about five questions and I'm gonna try to answer well right because again. I'm gonna get my questions in no, before yes, you sir. start I'm I know to you're gonna it, give me an in-depth answer um, so he, here's the, here's the thing um, an IDB um, or a, a housing authority are, are the only way a city can can purchase land be part of land to your last question where you talked about can they say no to whatever they have control of the land so yes um, if we want to stop our 17th car wash or our 15th uh, auto parts store or, or whatever it is that we have um, more than what many of our residents feel we, we have they by us owning it or, or, or having control of it we can do that um, you, you as a board couldn't go out today and purchase a, a piece of land and say let's let's drop a, a, a golden corral on it um, but through your IDB you could purchase land we've already used our IDB uh, with uh, to help lure and incentivize the uh, BJ's wholesale <laughs> project and you will uh, see that more of that the IDB will become more active as we as the more of this development does come in um, you did bring up something that I want to touch on you said why haven't previous boards now you're asking me a very loaded question there but I can speak to a board that, that I sat on um, you all are in a position that that we never were in you have the means you have let's put it this way you have more of the means than we did we didn't have the money that even if we had an IDB in place, I remember going back to 2010, 2012, we tried to work with the county IDB. The reason we, in, we installed our own city IDB was the fact that the county had told us we would not incentivize commercial or retail deals. I'm not going to go into that whole history, but the bottom line is we had talked about doing it. Well, the deal that originally was going to go Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx, uh, five below and a few other that were going where BJ's was moved to Smyrna um, we lost it because we did not have one of the reasons is we did not have an IDB in place that could help bridge the gap incentivize that deal um, others did um, it is a way that cities can invest in themselves um, for instance if we would have purchased property pre pandemic or if you would have gifted money to your IDB and you would have purchased, let's say, as we talked about two months back, we know the appraisal on the stormwater building was somewhere around $650,000. Well, we know that it jumped in two and a half years, it jumped to 925000 You're controlling the property. It also, so you sit on it, and then that money, it, it, the city, I'm not going to say it couldn't lose. Certainly, we could have an economy that drops or whatever, but... The way the real estate's been in Tennessee, obviously, it, it, you're probably in a very good shape to be holding onto a piece of property. It gives you total control. It gives, it gives us as economic development more options. For instance, if we owned 10 acres, 20 acres, 50 acres, we could go out and market what we want, what you want, what your will is. Now, I'm not advocating one way or the other because, um, you, again, as I've said, you have a tough job to do and, and you have to decide. But if you have the means... It's a heck of a way of investing in yourself, getting outside of the box and controlling, controlling whatever priority area that you, that you see in the city. Uh, again, we prop, if I ask you what's the most lucrative area in, in Laverne right now, I might get four different answers. But whatever it would be, it would be a way for you to determine its future. Not sit back and wait for a developer to come in and say, oh, by the way, we're going to fight you. We know, we know we can drop another car wash here. And, and us have, again, a, 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 another use that we're not happy with. Did I answer most of your questions? So who goes out, giving you all that leverage, who, who goes out and finds those businesses? Is that still economic development? Well, you certainly, it would still be us that would find it. And it, so um, I'd be happy tomorrow to send you something. <coughs> um, one of our consultants had a similar deal in Pflugerville, Texas. And I hate to use somewhere far away, but they're based out of, uh, Fort Worth they actually determined what they wanted they built it up architected out and then we went out meaning we the economic development side would go out and market to developers and say we would take bids kind of like you do with just about anything else so yes your, your the answer is we would still everything would remain the same except we would have total control of that property now having said that 
That's a lot of money. I'm not going to say what, what's being, being asked to be put in this budget. It's a lot of money. Do I think there's major return? Yes, I do. But it's up to you whether you all feel you have the means. Going back to 2010, 2012, 2014, we didn't have the opportunities that you all do now. We didn't have that kind of money sitting in the general fund. So, Tom, how many times are you asked at different conventions when, whenever you're showing the property book and all the different properties, how many times are you asked um, if the city owns that property? Every time. Every time. Um, developers, retailers are looking to, to do work with cities. They, they get better deals because the cities are getting their needs met and so are they. They want to have that public-private partnership there. So to answer your question, every just about every sit-down, they will ask, does the city own land? Does the city own this property <coughs> that we're talking about? I know six or seven years ago, we had that same conversation on the, well, I call it the Rock Curry, but right. it was where uh, the wholesale place is going. The, 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 the people who owned it wanted to go with, uh, with misuse, and we, we told them no, and that was really a, a hard uh, conversation and then the, uh, the the old driftwood motel thing comes to mind you know we me and you talked at length about that one you know I told you that's the prime property and we need to make sure we get a uh, a good motel or a good retail place there you know I, I think that the uh, the old driftwood place is one that we went into detail talking on it sure. the old rock quarry where wholesale's going you know, it was it was zoned one way, and they they zoned it, and they zoned it back. And the guy the guy that owned it had it for a long time, right. and he just was wanting to get rid of it. I think I, you remember, you know, he come to us and wanted just, just us just to take the note on it. He did, yes, sir. You know, I don't know how truthful he was on it, but he come to me and said, he said, Mayor, Mayor, let me give you this property if you just pay the note on it. Yeah, I remember him saying that. And, and to your point there. Um, the old driftwood in that now of course some other factors played in when they when the the owner wanted to sell but that's a perfect example um, look I, I'm gonna say this I Popeyes is great Thornton's is great but I think that the potential to have so much more right there uh, look at if it was a Bucky's right now which is, yeah I know it, 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 it kind of broke my heart uh, we're losing that because to me that was the the yeah. most prime property in the whole city. I, I agree, and, and again, that's another reason to, to answer your question or anybody's question on why you would do this. Um, if you can, if we control that piece, we, we could have put another hotel, a conference center, a restaurants, or whatever there. Um, but we were at the whim of the property owner at that point in time, and, and we got another gas station. Again, we're getting some some sales tax from it, but again, I think that corner could have could have been a uh, a very nice corner for for something, whether it be shopping, whether it been restaurants, hotels, whatever. So, in fact, we had we had Marriott and Hilton looking at that property. I'm not really trying to blow your whistle, but you know, since Tom has come on board the economic development, you know, he he's definitely gave, gave it a hundred percent. You know, you you gave it a hundred percent, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> My thought went right out the window. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thanks, I guess uh, I guess the bottom line is, in my mind, not nobody else, but in mine, I've got to decide because uh, it's. Uh, I think it's great, as you said. Though it is four million dollars, so a lot of money. I just, in my own mind, I got to make a decision. Sure. And uh, guys, uh, as I say all the time, my, my phone is, you all have it. My, uh, my door is always open. If you have questions, please, please call me. I'm happy to explain. Or if we need to, uh, we'll get Tom Trent, uh, probably the most formidable real estate lawyer in Tennessee. Um, we have a Zoom meeting with him on, on Monday. Um, I'll have him do an individual one with each of you that, uh, uh, well, He's going to cost a little bit of money if Bruce allows it. But at any rate, we'll get your questions answered. Whatever. It's my understanding there's only two attorneys in the state of Tennessee no, that does there's, this. There's several, but there's two that are the best. Tom Trent, who our IDB has retained, and Mark Mamatoff out of um, East Tennessee, out of uh, Knoxville. Those are, for instance, uh, there is a pilot that is, they, they both did our pilot with BJ's. There's the biggest pilot in the state of Tennessee is happening in Chattanooga right now. Uh, <clears throat> 
Mark is on one side, Tom Trent's on the other. Uh, the Costco deal in, in Murfreesboro, um, they were the same way. Co Tom represented the county, Mark represented Costco. So. I think Murfreesboro, I think they had something to do with the avenue up there. They did. Uh, I, I think they controlled a lot of that. <coughs> and if I can say one more thing, what you just said, many cities around us have, have, have utilized their IDVs um, for this purpose. Medical Center Parkway was, was a... Uh, was owned by uh, uh, Murfreesboro and then uh, grew. So was it was it owned by Murfreesboro or the county IDB? Well, I think county IDB, or they worked through the same way that was being put out here. So, uh, and you can look at, at, at uh, Nashville has done the same thing. Uh, I believe the area over by uh, David Waldron's place is owned by Smyrna, if I'm not mistaken. So they controlled that property and sat on it until. Uh, uh, you know, it was the right time they got what they wanted. So, well, I think that property there. I think, I think, if I ain't mistaken, I think it's, it's just on a lease deal. It, it it's leased by. Did you say it's leased by David? Or? I think, I think they, they, I know the U.S. Bank across the street is on a thirty year, on a thirty year, and I, I believe, I believe everything across the street, I think it's on a thirty year lease. Okay. okay. Well. Thank you, Tom. All right. Any other discussions on the budget? Keep it. Good one. Okay. Well, let's uh, move on to number 11. First, reading ordinance 2023-12, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund budget. And that one is um, adjusting uh, for three items. Um, and it is $45,000. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, moving on to 12. First reading ordinance 2023-13, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 stormwater fund budget. This is um, for architectural and engineering design services with public works and community development services facility. And this is uh, $220,000. Does anyone have any questions? How much money? 220000 That's, again, for architectural and engineering. Then moving on to Resolution 2023-12, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Alderman to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. Um, this is uh, These items are from the police department. Um, there's a five ton, six by six cargo truck, um, an expandable uh, light air mobile shelter, and then six Kawasaki diesel motorcycles. Does anyone have any questions? I didn't even know they made a diesel motorcycle. <laughs> yes, They're yes. Old. Chief Hatcher rides them into work every day. <laughs> With a helmet, though. Um, okay, we've got uh, boards and committees. We've got the Beautification and Arts Advisory Committee. We've got one term that expires at the end of April. That would be Tabitha Howard, and uh, she would like to remain on this committee. Uh, we have been advertising this on Channel 3 and social media, but not have not received any other applicants. Next, we have the Historical Preservation Advisory Committee. We've got one term that's vacant, and uh, that was Chuck Isbell, who had resigned. Uh, we have been advertising this, but have not received any applications at this point. So if we don't have any by Tuesday, this will be removed from the agenda. Next, we have the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. We've got two terms that expire on at the end of April. It's Roger French and Anthony Honeycutt. We have been advertising this on uh, Channel 3 and social media. We do have uh, both Roger and Anthony would like to remain on the board. We've also had applications from Lacey Lance and uh, from Chuck Isbell. So that will be on the agenda for Tuesday night. Next, we've got the Stormwater Appeals and Advisory Board. We've got two terms that are vacant um, just due to resignations and... Um, we will be advertising this on Channel 3 and social media, and if we don't have applicants for it, this will be pulled from the agenda. The next two are just kind of FYIs. We've got two terms on the Greenway that are expiring at the end of May. We've got Laura Davidson <coughs> and Mary Jane Skinner's terms. 
So we will reach out to them to see if they wish to remain on this board, as well as advertise that on Channel 3 and on our social media networks. And then for our Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, we've got two terms that are expiring, Felicia Anderson and Rick Autry. We'll reach out to both of them, see if they want to remain on this board, as well as advertise that. Uh, again, these last two are just advisory uh, for the board. They will not be on the agenda Tuesday night. <coughs> Moving on to uh, Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. Thank you. Uh, I want everybody to keep checking on the elderly. Make sure your pets and have uh, ample shade and, and water. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alderman Haas. I'd just like to thank everyone that came out for the baseball softball opening uh, April 15th. It was a success. And please continue to support the league on Tuesday night and Thursday night games and then Saturday games. Thank you. Vice Mayor No. Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, Laverne Senior Center. Man, knickknacks, what knots, and doodads. So uh, get your friends and families come by support the center there will also be other uh, vendors there they're going to have a lot of good stuff so come by and see us they're going to be serving breakfast barbecue for lunch and melissa is going to be making some of her famous nanner nanner pudding doug so you can come get you a couple big bowls thank you <laughs> well um do want to take a moment to remind everyone uh, as well as the senior yard sale we've also got project lit going on at the laverne library um, on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., so be sure to come by. There will be uh, Laverne High School students there, lots of activities. And at the very least, if you don't have a library card, please come by and get one. Um, with that, our call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>